My friends, tonight I want to take you along on a little rescue project. This Samua from Tamiya in 135th scale has been sitting on my shelf of doom since 2016, but unlike other abandoned projects, I always wanted to finish it one day. My original intention was to paint it as a captured Italian tank, because back then I wanted to be super original and edgy, but I felt miserably and quickly lost patience with it. It was just too dark and too rusty. It's also my first attempt at post-shading, so there's some historical value in it. I even invested in some aftermarket like Freel model metal tracks and photo edge slash resin upgrade from Hauler. So construction wise, it's a pretty nice model. The existing paint job is ugly, sure, but it's smooth. There's like no orange peel or heavy mud layers. So I won't have to strip the paint down. Instead, I'm gonna paint right over it and this time we'll go for a much happier, vivid French camouflage. The only detail that seems to be missing is some foundry markings on the hull. I'm not extremely passionate about this tank, so I'm not trying to replicate the exact numbers like on the real one. Just, you know, something, which is always better than nothing, right? Well, okay, I paid more attention to the other side, although the lettering isn't totally accurate. It should say KO is number 17C, but hey, <laughs> it's close enough, right? Alright, that's all the upgrades this model needs, at least I think, so let's give it a coat of primer. I already bought a new bottle of Mr. Surfacer Black, which is my all-time favorite, but because I'm gonna try full hairspray chipping on this one, a dark brown is gonna be more suitable. Whenever you're going for a dark steel base coat for your chipping, anything ranging from dark gray to dark brown is gonna work fine. Not having to strip the paint down can save you tons of time, and let's be honest, with the primer fully applied, you wouldn't even tell there are already several paints and effects underneath. I don't like spraying chipping fluids directly onto the primer though, so I decided to give it a light mist of flat brown Tamiya paint. You know, just for good measure, nothing more. Now we can apply the chipping fluid or hairspray. Two even coats as usual, because the first layer tends to bead up into small droplets, which would result in poor looking and unpredictable chipping. So after letting the first one dry completely, we apply another one, which will nicely cover the entire surface. And now, with the chipping fluid applied, let's see how we can transform this sad hunk of coal into a happy mint chocolate duckling. First of all, spraying a very thin mist of white over the entire model helps a lot. Because of this, you'll have a lighter undercoat, and as a result, you won't have to spray the actual tank color in such a thick layer. This will make the chipping process easier and the results will be very crisp and in scale. Then we can continue with the actual base color, which is very unusual on this tank. Keep in mind that there's no chipping fluid between the white and pale green, they're sprayed directly onto each other. As for the color choice, I'm following the Tamiya color profile, and it's one of the reasons I decided to go with this traditional French three-tone camouflage instead of something more unusual. My initial intention was to go for another free French forces tank with a dark grey base coat and random stripes of dark yellow. But I think this option will be even more colorful and interesting. Chipping is carried out with a variety of tools and tap water. First I like to distress the paint around the edges where most wear is gonna be present. An old airbrush needle is excellent for this, but of course you can use any sharp tool. Then I go over the whole panel with a large, soft paintbrush. This will remove the paint in a random manner and the resulting chips are gonna be very, very small. You know, just a few nicks here and there, pretty good stuff. Whenever I need to remove the paint in a more specific location, such as on this raised part, I again go for the airbrush needle, just gently tapping the surface and then expanding the effect with a paintbrush. Some places are easier to chip than others. I mean, pretty much everything with lots of sharp edges is gonna be really fun to work on, while cast surfaces with rounded shapes will require a more careful approach and some thinking. Also, if you're not satisfied with some results, there are two options that I know of. 
you can either spray over them and rework the chipping, or let it be and fix it later with a paintbrush, which is exactly what I'm gonna do in the next episode. Uh, probably. I also used this opportunity to do some work on the exhaust. It was the only part from the original model that I really liked, but I think it's gonna be fair to do it again from the start. This is just a dark brown base coat followed with pure white, and it's all we're gonna need for the next step with enamel rust effects. It's actually the same thing I did on my first try, I just didn't use hairspray but a sponge. And now, with the initial chipping layer completed, it's time to seal it with a solid coat of flat varnish. Veterans like Mike Rinaldi say it's not necessary, but I like to play things safe and, to be honest, it's not the only unnecessary thing I keep on doing. To be fair, the results exceeded my expectations. There are some chips which I don't quite like, but those can be fixed with a paintbrush. But, like, I mean, overall, I'm fairly happy. If you're doing a single color tank, this is an awesome approach in my opinion. But we're not even halfway there, we still have two more camouflage colors to apply and chip. Because these colors have sharp borders, no smooth transitions, I'm gonna mask them with this sticky, rubbery putty. It's not greasy, so it won't leave any residue on the model, and to make sure the edges are gonna be extra sharp, I pushed it against the model with a toothpick. It's also worth letting it sit for a while, let's say 30 minutes, as it's gonna level itself, flowing into every crevice and smoothening all sharp edges. Now we can spray everything below the mask with chipping fluid. Again, two coats, just like with the base coat. This part will serve as a troubleshooting segment because I made a huge mistake here. I wanted to spray the green in a translucent layer so I could still see the steel chips underneath and thus I'd be able to create a proper layered effect. However, little did I know that this decision would lead to detrimental results because if the layer of paint is very thin, you'll lose control over the effect. But first, let's remove the putty. It's a reusable material and you can clean it from dried paint by simply squeezing the putty between your fingers for a while. It's a pretty cool thing to have. Now, my problems. The thin layer of paint was anything but predictable. Most of the time it was coming off in large chunks and I often had to respray these spots and do it again. Large chips are okay if you're going for a heavily worn down vehicle such as I did on the previous model, the Syrian T55. But on a tank like this, which was in peacetime service for just a few years before 1940, eh, not so much. To be completely honest, I would get much more control with hand painted chips, both the light and steel ones. But hey, you'll never learn these things unless you try, right? But here comes the interesting part. The thread has a completely different pattern. It's one of the reasons I was interested in this camouflage. And it's too complex for masking. But the chipping fluid is our friend here. I could easily spray it freehand and then use the fluid as a sort of liquid mask, gently going over each patch with a brush and removing the smooth edges. That's pretty cool, right? And then, of course, doing the actual chipping. So, here's the second layer and first camouflage color. The unpredictable nature of this layer made me feel quite bummed out. But of course I didn't want to give up. After all, there are spots where it looks pretty good, and I'm sure everything can be fixed with a fine paintbrush, so let's move on and lay down the last color. But first, we need to repeat the boring stuff. Varnishing, masking, chipping fluid, and finally painting. That's, that's not the boring part anymore. This time I'm going with a much thicker layer of paint and to my surprise I was still able to see the steel chipping underneath. Also, as you'll see in a moment, brown creates more contrast with the mint colored base, which will make the chipping look even sharper. Removing the mask is one of the most satisfying things ever, but applying it is one of the most boring. I guess it's because of how bored you are, so the result makes you extra happy or something, I don't know. Anyway, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So, let's do more chipping. This layer was much sturdier, which made the chipping way more controllable. Just like with the base coat, the initial few passes with the large brush created tiny, barely visible chips. 
then some heavier chipping with a smaller, sturdier brush around the edges, some long, horizontal scratches with a needle, more chipping because this part is very exposed, and, of course, the inevitable mistakes and their correction with an airbrush. Steel chips were also pretty well visible through the paint, so I was able to achieve that nice layered effect. This is actually the hardest part about hairspray chipping, and to be fair, it's even more time consuming than painting the layered chips with a paintbrush. But again, I wanted to try it out, so you don't have to. In any other case, especially if you're working with a single colored vehicle, using hairspray is definitely quicker and easier than brush painting, but the more camouflage colors you have, the more difficult it becomes. You might wonder why I didn't spray them all in one go and chip the green and brown at the same time. It's simply because of their layout, you know? There was just no way to achieve those sharp borders other than spraying them individually over a mask. These results are much more satisfying and I'm starting to feel like with more practice they could actually look really good. But then again the question is, is it really worth it? Or is it better to just stick with paints and sharp brushes? I don't know, let me know your thoughts on this. There was one more feature that needed attention. The turret camouflage is outlined, and some modelers see this as something terrifying or hard to achieve. I've seen people using special pointy markers and other fancy tools, but hey, honestly, it was applied with a paintbrush in real life, and it sure wasn't perfect, so, you know, why not just embrace the imperfectness, right? Because there was still some leftover chipping fluid on the surface, even this Vallejo paint was removable. Not in these tiny, sharp patterns, but still, you know, better than nothing. Okay, we did it, the camouflage is done, there's only one more thing left to do, markings. And just as you would expect, French markings are just as colorful as their camouflages. I'm fully aware that you don't have to gloss before decals, but you know, I'm old school and like to play it safe. After all, told you I like to do many unnecessary things, but I'd rather go one more extra step just to be sure. Tamiya decals are always very nice, and when combined with decal setting solutions, you can make them conform to any surface, even something as gnarly as the cast texture on this turret, or a Zimmerit on a German tank. I even tried damaging them slightly with a knife, just so they don't look, you know, overly clean, but that didn't go so well. Which probably has to be expected, I mean, what was I thinking, right? Oh well. Another task for paintbrushes, I guess. But at least we'll have something to do in the next episode, along with pin washes and some extensive oil paint treatment. Finally, I gave the entire model, except the exhaust, a generous coat of satin varnish. This will give us a nice, smooth finish, and working with enamels and oils will be a blast. But that's a story for the next week. So, what do you think, my friends? I'm not 100% happy with the result, it leaves a lot to be desired, but at least we have a very colorful, happy looking tank that ain't German, Soviet or American, right? I think these French camouflages don't get enough attention from modelers, probably because they don't look menacing enough. I mean, Samiwa is probably one of the funniest looking tanks ever, nothing about it says cold steel war machine, you know, and these wacky colors don't help too much either. But hey, they provide us with a lot of contrast and the whole package is actually a very nice canvas for weathering. Even if the chipping is far from perfect, I'm much happier with this result compared to the initial dull and dark Italian version. So the next week we'll try to act like artists and give it a fair oil paint and enamel treatment. Until then I want to thank you for watching and for your continuous support my friends, it means a lot to me. And a special thanks goes to my amazing patrons who make this weekly show possible and are the official and only sponsors of this channel. It's hard to even visualize how much content I already posted on my Patreon page. I mean, there are thousands upon thousands of pictures from almost all my YouTube projects in form of almost daily updates, one week early ad free videos, 
so you know you could theoretically watch the next one right now also super nice studio photos which you could download in full resolution such as these and there are also dms for some one-on-one -on -one chat i've also posted several step-by-step -step guides from my pre-youtube years so you can find some of my good old models there such as the is7 three inch gun carrier d9 bulldozer and so on and I also have some 3D modeled accessories, which you can print yourself, along with a bunch of real-life references for dioramas and sceneries. Anyway, that's all I've got, my friends, so until next Friday, stay safe, stay awesome, keep building models, don't just collect them, and I'll see you... Yeah, I'll see you. <laughs> Cheers!